Hello, and welcome to Not Your Mom's Review Show. I'm Cher. And I'm Nikki. We talk about movies, TV shows, and a bunch of other random shit. Most of the time, it's relevant. Sometimes, not so much. But it's always amusing. Enjoy! Enjoy! Hey, Nachos! I'm so excited! We're doing something different today. I'm so excited! Nikki took up the mantle of having to prepare words. Which means it's going to be half-assed and um, Well, like it's improv. not with me. Like, I like to say I do research, but I mean, I'm not like going to the library. So or... <laughs> the problem with research is I just kept reading all these articles and was like getting really into them and then didn't um, write anything down or take any notes from anything that I was... Yeah. Reading, I was just interested in what I was reading. And it happens. Yeah. It Rabbit happens. holes. I have hiccups too. I apologize. Okay. The I'm reason for this it. Ice cream. The reason for that is because this is my favorite movie of all time. I have come to that decision. Paul Reiser? If anybody ever talks about what's your favorite movie, you know, it would always be like, oh, it depends on my mood. Mm. And blah, blah, blah. No. This is my favorite movie. Mine is Harold and Maude. Yeah. 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 It's just, I can watch it at any time. Yep. And sometimes I'll put it on and be like, oh, I'll just have this on in the background, Mm -hmm. like while I'm doing something, and then I end up sitting there and watching it, because it's just so fucking good. I don't have any qualms or any, anything about this movie. Yeah. Lord of the Rings is your background movie. That's my background. I have my spot, like my parts, like if I see a part coming up, I'll sit down and watch it and then I can go and go do something else. It's Return of the King for you, right? Um, well, it goes back and forth between um, Return of the King and, uh, what's the second Two, one? Tow- Two Towers. Two Towers, yeah. Two Towers I very much enjoy as background because I really like the um, rain battle mm. at the, what you call it? Is that the one where the ants are talking about losing their ant wives? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> in, the, in the extended, in the extended edition, yeah. It was the best speech but, ever. I don't know if we said that. Um, this, we were watching Aliens. Aliens! This movie... I grew up with this movie. I wasn't allowed to watch The Simpsons, but I could watch this movie. What well, year did it come out? You know? I actually oh. put it down on my little notes Look thing on paper. So, Aliens, the release date was July 14th, 1986. So, I was about to turn five. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I don't rem- I don't think I watched it at five, but this was just so my grandparents. Well, you might have. <laughs> who knows? My grandparents had Hi, HBO, Sorry. and they recorded on VHS like mm-hmm. a bunch of so each VHS would have like two or three movies on it. Yeah, and then they just kind of handed them out to everybody. Like oh yeah, like I, I don't know if they handed them out and we borrowed them and never gave them back. I don't know, but one of them was. Aliens. And back in the day, I don't know if any young people listen to this, but that was a mark of wealth. Mm-hmm. Having just blank VHSs around. Or just having a fucking a VCR. VH- yeah, a, a, <laughs> that could record. Yeah, and that, that it would record from the TV, and it was just like, and they had HBO, which yeah. was just like, and it would just play movies all day long. Yeah. Like, it was just movies. Which I, don't I think, think it still does. I don't like, know. Everybody yeah. streams everything No, now, they so do. Like, like, HBO still, they have their movie of the week, like, on Sunday nights at 8 or something like that, where mm. that's, like, their big production or whatever. But, like, I think back in the day, they didn't have any original programming. No, no, no. It was just movies. Yeah. It was movies. just movies. And so they would just be playing movies all day long. So my grandpa, you know, retired, would just record them. And so, like, you would open up the thing underneath the TV. You opened up the two doors of mm-hmm. the big wood thing and there was just VHS and it was written in my you know my grandpa's handwriting on was the it side. sharpie no no it was in a pen <laughs> because there was three movies so it had to be enough room yeah. you know for for the label and it'd be written on the side and one of them was aliens and it's yeah i literally this movie people are like oh it's gory and blah blah this movie soothes me okay that's how much of my childhood it's part of question mm-hmm I've known this was your favorite of the Alien franchise. Yeah. How long did it take before you watched Alien? Um, probably... No, well, I had seen it, Mm -hmm. but not as much as Aliens. But I think when I really, really watched it, watched it, I was probably like high school. Did you watch Aliens first? I don't know, honestly. Mm, Okay. They were just kind of part of everything. But, yeah, Aliens was definitely the... 
the go-to. Like, I, there's parts of this movie, just the the talking between characters that are that's in my mind. Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, the noises, mm-hmm. everything. Like, I we've watched it so fucking much that it just... I know that shriek. Yeah, it's just... Yeah. Oh, look at that. I did find out in my research that the alien shriek is... Hold on, I have it on here somewhere. I've had some drinks. The alien screams are bamboon, baboon shrieks altered in post. Is that the queen? Just the alien shrieks the alien? in general. Mm-hmm. The, that high pitched okay. shriek. Yeah. That's cool. I didn't know. I always wonder, like, you see those behind the scenes from uh, animated movies and stuff and how they make the noises. And I always yeah. thought it would be similar to the noise that they're trying to portray. And it's something completely different. It's crazy. Like, you'll see, like, you, you it really looks like they went into a thrift store and mm-hmm. just randomly grabbed stuff and banged it against walls and stuff yeah. like that. Like, I remember the first time I saw that they made... The first time I saw when they, they made um, the rumbling thunder noise and crash, and it was one of those really long saws. Yeah. Those thin, long yeah. saws, and they were just, like, moving it back and forth to make the thunder noise. And I was like, holy crap. Like, that's kind of amazing. So this picks up, for Ripley at least, right when Alien left off. Because well, she went into hypersleep at the end of the Alien. Yeah. So, this, so is, this is how she gets woken up. This is my opener. Okay. That I was That I was, um... So here we are. We came off of Alien with Ripley being a fucking badass, mm-hmm. right? She just saved a kitty oh, yeah. and blew an alien that managed to kill everyone but her out of a goddamn airlock. She's holding up to bring it on. So she wakes up from cry- cry- cryosleep. I've had some drinks. To learn that 57 years have passed. Oh my god. Her daughter is dead. No, no. No one believes her story. The fuck? They're talking like they're going to send her a bill for all the damages to their property. Oh, no. They revoke her pilot license. Hell no. She's got PTSD. Uh Uh-huh. And fucking Burp tells her that the only way to get her piloting license back is to go back to the planet where all of this shit started just to have a bunch of jarheads not believe her and not listen to her just like her fucking crew 57 years ago. That's some bullshit. So that's, that's where we start. Yeah, well, we start with her having a dream hmm. where she's impregnated. Oh, no. <clears throat> by one. That's a terrible dream. And so, you, of course, you know it's a dream because there'd be no movie, you know, right, that yeah. happened. But that's, she's got PTSD. Like, she's got Jones For sure. And everything seems okay. She's in a hospital, and then this happens, and then she wakes up, and you realize this bitch has got some PTSD, which... Are we really surprised? Like, she Not had a whole fucking alien after killed her whole crew, you know, blah, 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 stuff. Not at all. So um. that's, that's where we come in on here. But we have no fear because this is motherfucking Ellen Ripley. Ripley. And um, one thing that I will always take from this movie, which I don't know if everybody else takes it this way, but whenever I think about my son being bullied mm. <laughs> or I think about... A parent-teacher conference going awry. Yeah. I think of channeling my inner Ripley. Oh, she's your spirit animal. Because she's she's just what, like, she, I wish I could be her. She's a strong, confident, mm-hmm. but very feeling mm-hmm. person. Let's not even talk about woman, but in general, yeah. person. Because her... Her character was originally written for a man. Really? Yes. I it was that. supposed to be a man. And then, I can't even remember his name, the famous James director. Cameron? Yeah. yeah. It was kind of like, well, what if it was a woman? Huh. Yeah. Props to him. And they were like, huh. So, and then there's a whole thing about like, oh, does he make the perfect feminist character? Like, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Where people argue, no, it's just a woman playing a man's character. Um... So I have some qualms with that. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. But, hold on, I wrote notes. And I, I made, I'm an idiot for trying to read stuff. Right Women now. contain multitudes, just like everybody else. Yeah. But I was like, um, I grew up in a time where badasses were also mothers. Mm. And nothing, nothing is more glorious and badass than a mother protecting her child. Yeah. Because we know, as mothers, we would do... Anything. Mm-hmm. And I think parents in general, you will do anything for your child, but there's always no mama bear. Yeah, like, no. don't fuck with mama bear. <clears throat> um, and also thinking about, there's a lot of physical similarities between Sigourney Weaver and my mom. Mm. And I, I don't know if that's 
we, but my mom was tall. My mom was like five nine. Scorty Weaver's like five eleven or six foot. Oh wow! Somewhere in there, she's very tall. Um, in my little bit of research, I watched a something because I never seen. I've seen the third Aliens where uh-huh. they go to the prison planet, or where she goes to the prison planet. It's the one after this. It's, eh. But there's another <laughs> one where they bring up like her clone. It has Winona Ryder in it. I've never seen that oh, one. Oh shit! But it also has um, dude that plays Hellboy. Oh, Ron Perlman. Yeah, Ron Perlman, and she's standing face to face with him. Oh, like it didn't like she's a like a little bit shorter than him, and it de- didn't really click with me how tall she was until Is that I saw her daughter. That. Uh, yeah, that's her daughter, and who, who died. No children. Oh. Yeah. So that's the end of that line. So and is she, she married or home. anything? It doesn't say if she was married. It just says that she had a daughter, and she's supposed to be home for her eleventh birthday. But she has never asked about a husband or anything. Like she didn't that. ask him about a husband. She doesn't about a daughter. Oh, so. maybe not. Oh, oh no! <laughs> oh, fuck. oh, it's oh, it got landed. Hair on it. it landed up though. I don't see oh, any hair. Oh, I thought it landed down. I was like, that no. ice cream picked up some hair. No, it's good. It's good. I'm going to go put it back in the freezer because I, yeah. Uh... I'm going to try to find where I am. Mm. But, like, her bone structure, like, her lips, my mom has. Oh, oh, God. The same kind of, like, lip structure as her. Yeah. And everything like that. So I just see some similarities. My mom was tall and lanky with wide hips. And yeah. I just, I see it, too. I can't help it. I put that in there. But then we also had. Well, that makes it more. Uh, close to home. Yeah. You know. And then I was I was talking to somebody and I was like, we talk about movies that I grew up with. We also had like Terminator. We're granted Sarah Connor wasn't quote unquote a mother in the first one, which the first one came out. She looks like a mom though. Terminator came out in 1984. Okay. So it came out two years before Aliens did, but Terminator 2 came out in 19, 1991. Yeah. And that's where we see her interacting with her son. Yeah. Which she's not the best mother as in like nurturing or caring, but she's literally taking on fucking machines and all of this shit, teaching him all these skills and stuff like that so they can survive. Like in that she's a badass mom. She's killing fucking machines with shotguns and doing all this shit like mama berry. And she's the kind of, I mean, she, she kind of represents that woman that, you know, some of I mean, she doesn't know what she's doing. Right. None of us know what we're doing, and we always worry that we're fucking it up. Mm. And she, she's not the stereotypical like nurturing mother who yeah. dotes on her kids, but she loves him nonetheless in her own way. Yeah. And so <clears throat> she's it's doing like that perfectly flawed. Like yeah, she's still doing what she can to to take care of him the best way that she knows no. how. And she was, I mean. What would you do if you learned that, like, these machines' whole purpose was to come back in time and murder your child? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you kind of have to, even if you didn't start out that way, I can imagine you would have to turn into that yeah. just in order to make she sure that She turned into okay. exactly what she needed to turn into yeah. to, to, for him to be the man that humanity, quote unquote, yeah. needs. So she might have been Synergy. maybe not like what we would think of as the perfect mother, but she yeah. was for him. Yeah. For that situation. And yeah. she was perfect for that. Which granted when the when Terminator Two came out they brought him up when he's in like adolescent, like pre teen, mm-hmm. like going through my mommy doesn't love me. He's like, mm-hmm. Really you don't think so? Because look at all the stuff she taught you and look at what yeah. the fuck she's doing now. Like have you seen her biceps? Yeah, God. That's for you, son. When they brought in that scene where she's like in the prison or <laughs> yeah. something like that and she's and that, like doing um not the tank top, but that shirt that sleeveless like shirt. No, she was I think she was wearing like a tank top and like was it? she was like doing like push ups no, she was doing pull ups or something. Yes. And I was just like, Yeah, I'll take that. That that's I would like to be that that mama too. bear. Not in prison, but you know, <clears throat> muscles. But she was a ruthless and determined mama bear that will destroy anything that she even thinks that is gonna hurt her son. Yeah. Like she she's all about her son. So when it comes to like if somebody's gonna do something to my kid, what are we doing? Inner yeah. Ripley, Ripley, inner fucking Sarah Connor, like nobody's gonna fuck with my kid. Yeah. Look at her face. She's just like I cannot believe yeah. I've been through she hell and back. just got done. Like she, yeah. they, she's like, we've been here for hours. It just happened. She's like, her. and and she's so honest. She's like, how many times do you want me to tell the same story over and over again? And the and the one thing about Ripley is that you know she's this badass. She's, you know, what I love about these movies, nobody just turns to her and says like, you're a bitch. Like that's never even, ever even thought of being said to her. That is nice. Because it was written for a man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) That's the real difference. But it's like, but 
throughout all of that, like right now, she's asking him. He's like, "Oh, there's terraformers on LB four twenty six." Which, when I was growing up, I always thought it was LB, so that's why I'm messing it up. <laughs> What's it supposed to be? Elba? LB. 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 Four twenty six. Four two six. Whatever. Is that where but, the shit went down? So that's where the an alien. Uh huh. They got wake. They get woken up from hypersleep because the ship is like, oh, there's like a distress call or yeah. something like we need to investigate on this planet. Okay. They go on to the planet. That's where they see the crash. They go in to investigate. And that's when the face hugger attacks there. Uh, okay. Gotcha. Okay. And they bring on the ship and blah blah blah. So here, come to find out, she's just asking him about the planet, and they're like, "Oh yeah, there's terraformers on there," and she's like, "Terraformers? Like, how many people?" And he's like, "60, 70 families," and she's like, "Families." Oh my god. She's Ripley is about life. Yeah. She's about these families like of course she's also thinking probably like the more people there are the more aliens there's going to be yeah but her first concern and what she's always going after is protecting life she goes back onto that ship to get that cat yeah because she has a love of quote-unquote life well and she feels um she's a protector obligated to i mean that the cat is essentially helpless like it can't fly a ship it can't get into an escape pod like She's she's the only thing that's going to keep that cat alive, and I think she takes that responsibility yeah. very seriously. If it's a human or a, you know any a, any type of life deserves respect. But I think also for her, like she'll speak any way to a grown ass person. Like, yeah, I will tell you exactly how it is. But when it comes to children or animals, which reminds me a lot of you, yeah. <laughs> children yeah. or animals, you will never see Cher soften up more than when there's a child yeah. or a pet, yeah. an animal of some sort around, and that's. She's going to help those that cannot help themselves. Well, they don't have any agency. Like, a dog can't voice any... You know, like, if, you, if you're if you a dog and you have a shitty owner, like, you're just trapped. Like, mm-hmm. you can't do anything for yourself. You can't open doors. You can't call for help. Like, you're just at the mercy of these horrible people. Yeah. And same with children. Like, they, they rely on us. And, and children have... So, and it's the same with dogs, too. And Not that I'm trying to say that human <laughs> children are equivalent to dogs, but, you know, it's like they, um, they have a, a twisted sense of this, that instinct that these adults are supposed to take care of me yeah and if they're not doing something it's probably a reflection on me like Mm. i'm not a good kid and that's why they're mean to me like they don't ever think about it as these are just bad people yeah and um i think in some way animals are the same like they can't understand why someone would treat them badly right they're like what did i do wrong yeah like Like, that's the first this is my fault like i should be a better kid or a better dog or you know whatever yeah yeah and that Ripley is the defender of that. She's going to, you know, she's, oh, you always know if there's a kid around or if there's an animal around, Ripley's got it. Like, she's the patron yeah. saint of sci-fi pets and, yeah. and, and orphans, <laughs> I, like I guess. I like that. Patron saint. We should so, make a medallion. <laughs> oh, right. Like one of those Catholic medallions, yeah. but it's Ripley's face. <laughs> if anybody does that, it was my idea. Or shares <laughs> pointing out my idea. Yeah. We get, we get licensed. You heard it here We get licenses. Okay, hold on. I just went over the thing. I'm not really good at this. I'm sorry. Who's this guy driving the ATV? Those are Newt's parents. Who's Newt? Newt's little girl. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, the... They mostly come out at night. Mostly. What the fuck is that? That's the ship that's crashed. That's where all of the aliens are. So, you find out from Prometheus... Oh, yeah, I was going to ask you about that. So that's the origin of all of the shit. Predator, alien, all that stuff. Not Predator. Well, the two are related, so I just... No, Blade Runner Blade Runner, okay. So Blade Runner and aliens are closely linked. I'm not big enough of a fan. I'm I'm a fan of movies, but I don't dig too much into that kind of stuff. I think we covered it when we did Alien. But yeah. I can't remember now if they reverse engineered Predator to fit it into this universe or if that was the plan all along. I, I can't don't remember. remember if Predator was even linked. I can't remember. I know that Blade there so the well, Yeah, because that's what Predator was designed to hunt the alien, right? No, because that's A V P. That's Alien versus Predator. So I yeah. didn't get too much into A V P. I don't know 
Because oh, I thought I that's what they go. I thought that they use guess. the humans for like practice. Like that's what they. Well, would like do. so, predator. It's it's you know they pre- the predators come down and hunt humans for sport during the hot months, the hottest yeah. years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, you know their their favorite spots. I guess you know all hunters have their favorite spot. Mm-hmm. But so as far as but AVP, I I watched the movie when it for the first movie came out. I have played some of the games that were the computer games, oh, okay. um, PC games, um, AVP, well, but I don't know the whole history behind is it. Is it not like canon? I don't, yeah, I don't. Yeah, okay, okay. I'm sorry. I, I will be a fan of something all day long, but once you go into stuff where you have to research and bring all this stuff together, I'm not that good at it. I mean, it, if so they don't I'm, give it to you in the content itself, then I yeah. feel like that's kind of a stretch. But, like, I, I, I knew Predator first, and yeah. so that's always my... I was I was glad to know that there was a relationship because mm-hmm. that brought you and me closer together in yet another way. <laughs> but, you know, I'm God, I love that movie. Predator. See, Predator was also another one that I grew up in. <laughs> oh, we, we still need Star- the second Jack! one. This oh, with Don, Donald Glover, Danny Glover. Danny Glover. Oh my God, yeah. I love that one too. Like, I there's too. something about that part where the um, predator goes into that bathroom and he breaks tiles and crunches it up and puts it in his med kit and mm. puts it on his wound. I'm like, yeah, that's the most metal shit I've ever seen in my life. So the little girl, yes, what's her name? Carrie. Now Han. she looks like she would have been the age. Ripley's daughter would have been when she was originally supposed to go back. Okay, I'm seeing so how this she shapes was. Up. So she was really nine. John Malkovich Ash. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I remember. Oh my god. <laughs> Malkovich, Malkovich. Okay. So the um, she was actually nine, but her character is written in as like being eleven or twelve okay. years old. So um, yeah. So it kind of. Yep. You you kind of knew she was gonna scoop this little girl after finding it out. It's home. Yeah. But the the girl, this is her name's Carrie Henn. Mm-hmm. This is her only movie. Really? Yeah. Okay. She got um, her parents let her buy a TV and a waterbed, and wow. the rest of the money got put away to. She's a teacher. Oh, yeah. that's mm-hmm. nice. So she goes to conventions oh and stuff God. like that. There's now nothing and then more eighties than a waterbed. <laughs> right. <laughs> she got her own TV and a waterbed, and that was. And the then the rest dream. of the money got put away. They they were stationed in. Um, I think England or something like that. Okay. When they got cat, when she got cast, I'm sorry, I didn't read too much into it. Yeah. But yeah, that was it. Then they, um, her dad got stationed to like Northern California or something like that, and so mm-hmm. there were talks about her going to LA and because mm-hmm. she's a really great, she was a really great actress. Yeah. But um, but then they were like, no, we don't want. It was bad enough moving from England to California. Yeah. And they're going through everything with that. The, a little girl, nine years old. Just the change in weather alone. Yeah, right. <laughs> Literally, the little girl had to go through meeting people and them saying, like, you didn't deserve that role <gasps> and stuff like that. A oh little nine-year-old God. girl. People yeah. are trash. And so she was just kind of like, you know, good. Like, There's I got no my movie to, in. Yeah, you don't need to introduce blah, that. Blah. Oh, my God. And then... Um, the poor baby. Sigourney Weaver, she got, I think it was 35000 for Alien. Holy shit, that's it? And she got a million for Aliens. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, because her character was so beloved. Like they, so they were talking about making a sequel like right after because it was such a, uh, it was such a hit. Alien was, but this movie didn't get made until seven years huh. after the first one. Which Bravo Sigourney, she looks freaking amazing. She looks the same. So she was in cry cryo sleep. I can never say that word right. Yeah. Um, to where she technically didn't age at yeah, all. Yeah, She looks amazing. She really does. You can tell there's a slight difference, but it's mostly she looks the great. haircut. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, but there were some issues with, so the production company and 20th Century Fox yeah. had money issues. Pretty Ugh. much they were saying like, um, so they're like, you know what? You can go ahead and make this new. We're not going to give you any more money from the old one. You can make your money off this new one. And they're like, okay, fine, we'll do it. Okay. So, yeah. But then there was still a lawsuit afterwards because they weren't giving money rights to blah, blah, blah. It was, right. yeah, it was a mess. But that's why it was seven years later for that to be made. It's a miracle. Like, the more I find out about the movie industry, the more I think it's a miracle anything ever gets Everything made. Everything gets made. Yeah. There are so many writers who have said that they've written a script, it's been bought, they got paid for it, and then it just... Just never got made. 
And I mean, part of me is like, you know what, that sounds like a, I mean, it's, you still got paid at the end of the day, but then I can understand artistically, like, you never get your, your voice out there. Like, yeah. I can see the frustration in that, but I'm still like, holy shit, like, what is the job that I can do where I get paid for something that just never matters? It was <laughs> watching the, um, what was it? No, ma'am. Don't tear it up. Her cats are being dicks. Yeah, that's what they do. So good. They're so good at it. But the, um, what was the thing I told you how to watch on Die Hard? The, um, the oh, movies that made us? Is that what it's yes. called on Netflix? I think you said that's right. When there is nothing that makes you realize everything that you just said more. I'm going to write that down before I forget. Continue. Than that. Because they talk about all the little, like, there was the first script. Yeah. And then the second script and the third script. And then the guy who wrote the first script was like, yay, my movie's getting made. They kicked him out and got a new writer. Oh, no. And the whole thing was being written as it was being um, being filmed? Filmed. Holy yeah. shit. I don't know how that movie turned out and how it turned out so amazing. But yeah, that it was a clusterfuck. All right, I just added it to my queue. It is so good. It is so good. Watch is that. It like a... Whoever edited the show yeah. did an amazing job. Like, it, it just keeps you enthralled and entertained the entire time. It's so really, really sweaty. good. Is she having a panic attack? PTSD. She just uh, woke yeah. up from a nightmare. Uh, okay. This is where she's realizing that she's not going to be able to get over this until she faces it. And she's pretty much... It's very self-aware. Yeah. She's pretty much miserable. She's just working in like a freight place, moving freight or whatever. Yeah. Because she doesn't have her pilot's license. She's stuck Ugh. on the base. And so she's kind of like... Burke is like, yeah, we'll give you your, your stuff back if you come as a consultant. So let me get thing. this straight. She is the one who told them not to forego the quarantine protocols she is the one that had to try to protect everybody as they were dying off slowly one by one she is the one who managed to make it out alive and then they're trying to say that somehow this is all reflecting badly on her and they're going to take away no, her shit first they're saying we don't believe you uh, so literally you lost millions billions of dollars worth of equipment you're trying to cover your ass by saying it was aliens so we're going to punish you by taking away your licensure or whatever. And there's no black box or anything on the ship. Like, I there's mean, no evidence. I don't think they didn't get that like, far. Oh they didn't get far. Well, the whole thing got destroyed, so all there was yeah. was, there was pod. the pod. Yeah, that, okay. It wasn't like a pod. It was like a ship or whatever. But anyway, yeah. Well, pretty mini much. Ship. Yeah. That they're, they're saying, like, you don't have any evidence to back up what you're saying, so we don't believe you. So, I mean, we're not going to send you to prison, but we're not going to make your life easy. Typical. Just don't want to pay out for anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So then, then they lose contact with LV-426, which they have Shocking. billions of dollars invested in because sure. they're terraforming That's it, expensive. which takes many, 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 many yeah. years. Lots of scientists, lots of manpower. Lots of equipment, a lot of people they're paying. So there's a lot of that. And so now they're like, oh, maybe let's go talk to this chick that... Uh, she might know yeah, something about She might about know this. what's going on. Like, maybe, maybe some of the stuff that she said... We're going to fuck her over... Mm, yeah. but maybe we'll throw our bone too so on some of the feminist stuff that I was looking at there were people who had a lot of complaints about so this is them sending her to LV yeah okay. so this is with the marines uh, clearly yeah so they're sending <laughs> in with marines and uh, so they're like we'll send you in with marines blah 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 so people were like what the hell <gasps> is that Bush? I think I saw I a little saw bit of Bush, Bush. oh my gosh I'm so happy so they're like, well, the women are walking around in their underwear. And I'm like, so are the men. Yeah. And here's the thing. They're, this is a completely co-ed dressing area. And look how none of them are really paying attention to each other in any kind of yeah. sexual way. I feel like this is the perfect gender neutral yeah. situation. No the only time yeah. something gets brought up is when... Vasquez, the fucking wouldn't want to fight her chick, uh -huh. Hispanic chick, she says, like, que bonita, who's Snow White? So she's okay. pretty much saying, like, what a beauty, who's she? Yeah. That's the only time any kind of, like... That's more racist than it is sexist. Like, physical, like, you're hot or you're yeah. pretty or anything really gets brought up. Don't let's have any attention is brought yeah, to it. Yeah, in, in, in that kind of nature. There's like. some, I, I told my daughter that she has to be careful because there are some people who just will 
go to any length to try to find fault with mm-hmm. things and blame it on feminism. Yeah. And I'm like, some, you know, the, the thing is, anybody can have an opinion online. Yeah. But you really have to think for yourself and you have to evaluate for yourself, like, what when you actually think something is, is going wrong. And because so, I told her, like, a lot of people will nitpick yeah to the nth degree when it really isn't like they're making so much more of it than it actually is and that's how that's how i feel about this i feel like okay as a woman it was awesome seeing this strong female character two of them now yeah there's three there's there's two other chicks too so there's four but and then one chick she's like a pilot like she pilots all of the the stuff i don't even know what the other chick does honestly i'm sorry i'm a horrible yeah, person yeah we'll just say engineering <laughs> yeah we'll just say we'll just say oh, oh. but i mean they're all on equal yeah. that's my my i'm looking at this i'm seeing in here they're all equal you have vasquez with the other big burly dude they're the only ones with the huge guns that are yeah. like attached to them they're these huge i don't know guns but they're huge Big fucking guns. Yeah, big fucking guns. They got big fucking guns. Yeah. And they're like... And weapons, too. <laughs> you see their relationship in it. Like, when you first assume, like, they're in a relationship. Like, yeah. they're... Maybe they're fucking... But there's never any... It's, like, just they're, friendship. Yeah, they're like, colleagues. Like, I think it's just... They're co-workers. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just... It's... That brotherhood. Yeah. It's like equality. This scene right here. So, this is a famous scene. Oh. The knife trick scene. Five finger... Uh, what do you call it? Five yeah. finger... Uh, what is it? Fuck, five finger... Not death punch. Five finger... Uh, filet. Oh. Is that what it's called? Yeah, I think so. But, so this, it was only supposed to be Bishop, the android, doing it. And then they had the idea of, like, oh, we'll put um, Bill Paxton in there. I was about to say, is that Bill Paxton? Yeah. They're like, we'll put Hudson's hand in there, too, like, blah, blah, blah. And he actually did nick his pinky Ooh. by accident. Yeah. <laughs> it was another, another one of those little trivia things he I, did get nicked by. I, I don't know. Maybe if someone paid me a million dollars, but, you know, uh, otherwise, fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then there was a lot of... Um, I need my hands. <laughs> a lot of Hudson stuff was um, improv. Like, the very famous Game Over Man, Game Over yeah. improv. Like, it was improvised. Always, and it's one of the huge lines of the movie. Those always work out really well. Like, most of... Um, God, what movie was it? There was some movie where, like, most of it was improvised. Yeah. And I'm just like, that is amazing. Yeah. And there's, so there's other little nitpicky things I love about this movie that yeah. I hate. I remember we watched some kind of movie and it was driving me crazy that somebody would start a journey at like sunset and the next scene it would be like midday sun. Uh-huh. Like, why wouldn't you pay attention to these details? Like, you say you're going to be there by midday and it was like obviously sunset. Like, it, it, those kinds of little oh, things. Yeah. So at the end of this movie they're literally like the place is going to explode in 15 minutes yeah if as soon as it says you now have 15 minutes you time it the rest of the, that part of the movie is 15 oh, minutes nice. there it goes on there's another part where um i don't think i wrote this one down i didn't dang it there's another one. those things are important to me yeah. like those stupid little things like when somebody's like holding their breath and it's obviously way longer than anybody would be able to hold their breath underwater. Those things drive me crazy. Yeah. So when it says you have 15 minutes and they made it to where it was exactly 15 minutes, like props. Yeah. That props. kind of stuff is like nice for me. It's like icing yeah. on the cake, but like it really, I don't give a shit at all. Like, the, yeah. and that's what, um, one of my coworkers, like those kind of things infuriate her too. Mm-hmm. And so we come to an impasse sometimes when we're talking about things because she'll like really just be digging in on this because she's very like I am very much a character person like yeah. I will I am so generous when I watch shows and stuff about plot points and like you said like mm-hmm. continuity stuff like that like I am a, an incredibly generous viewer yeah as long as I like the characters and the the interactions between characters and stuff and she's she's kind of the opposite where like the characters are icing for her but she is really in it for the story yeah like she needs everything to make sense yeah to to work out well and so it's just it's really interesting like it's frustrating sometimes when we talk about stuff but i think those it's very valuable to me to kind of get to think about something from someone else's perspective and see how you know different types of people view different things and you'll be like i don't understand how somebody could not like this movie and then somebody brings something and you're like oh i can see that yeah that could be bugging if you don't like those things and that's pretty yeah okay i mean i kind of get it now i don't agree with you but i got it (laughs) you know 
But um, there was one episode of Brooklyn Nine Nine where they did it in real time. Like mm-hmm. it was a big deal. Like they they um, they socialized that it was going to be like in real time. Like the whole episode is going to be like in real time. So like they have this task they have to do, and and it's going to be like you know in twenty two minutes, and that's and you're not going like, to cut scene or anything. But I like, like that. I was I was watching it, and honestly, like me being the person I am like I noticed absolutely no difference it didn't do anything for you <laughs> it did nothing for yeah. me actually. like this was like a regular but you'll episode. have another bunny who will bring out their phone and put on their yeah. timer and be like if they can stick to this then that shows that they're a great unit like it but proves I was like, something I was like why was this such a big deal like it didn't fucking matter <laughs> yeah but for some reason like when I read that I was like no wonder there's another reason why I love this movie so much like it well, sticks to what it says I like, have terrible news for you then oh god I know that um you and I have both talked about how we kind of don't want to see 1917, even though yeah. it looks like it's going to be an incredible movie. But I did see, like, you know, since it's been out for a little while now, people said it's filmed in a way that it looks like it's one continuous shot. Oh, God. And so now that you say that, I'm thinking that might be very intriguing and satisfying for you. Yeah. So if we need to watch it, we can well, watch no, it together. That's not enough to tempt me. War movies? Fuck. I know. Me, me too. All those um, baby boys. Because it's like real. I know yeah. it's a movie, but it's but it based happens. off of real. And don't get me wrong, like every movie has a little bit of real in it. You yeah. know, it's usually. But I mean, those war movies, the things that happen in war, it it sticks with me. Yep. <clears throat> and it, it destroys me. Well, I just feel like any death in war was senseless yeah like there is absolutely no reason that 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 had to happen and people get so pumped full of this idea of patriotism and like we have to do this because we're defending democracy or whatever and i'm like Mm. no the the reasons behind most wars are so petty yeah and so beneficial to rich people Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. it really you're just fodder yeah it's not and that's what that's what really messes me up is that I'm watching this and yes, like you said, it's all it's all it's just a movie. Mm-hmm. Even if it's based on true events, like you know people improvise here and there and to make the story better, but like you know that those things in one form or another actually happen to real yeah. people and it's just for absolutely nothing. Yeah. It's for nothing. Like the only war that was worth anything the only wars that to me that are worth anything are like grassroots movements where people are trying to overcome oppression. Like yeah. the, to me, those are the only causes that are worthwhile. Yeah. But all this nationalism shit <clears throat> is just, it's just, it, it doesn't, it, it's never for the reason that we get in the history books. Yeah. Never. And I feel like that's also why these, these movies and stuff, like they hit me so incredibly hard because it's the, what, you know, people went through like we learn in our history books and they say you know 10,000 people died here but now you're getting a close-up look of one of those 10,000 people dying yeah it's not just 10,000 people it's 10,000 people with lives and people that love daughters and husbands and And they didn't have a choice like a lot of times they didn't have a choice like if, if it was you know in more recent wars and stuff you would be drafted and, but, like, you know, prior to that, it was conscription or, like, you know, indentured servants or slaves mm-hmm. had to go fight. And it wasn't really a choice. And even if it was a choice, like, you can sign up to be in the military or not during wartime, it was almost like a social peer pressure. Mm-hmm. Like, if, you don't, if you're fit to fight, you're young and you're, you know, you meet all the requirements for what a good soldier would be and well, you don't do it. you've never picked up a sword in your life or but never if, picked yeah. up a gun in your life and now you have to. But it's like, it goes back to like the Mulan thing, like Mm -hmm. he was going to go fight in that war, the dad, he was going to go fight in that war for honor because it was such a mark on your character if you didn't The shame brought to the family, these guns right here, so those get attached to them. Those are big fucking guns. Yeah. Look at those, oh my god, look at her muscles. I know. Oh. I yeah. am impressed and a little aroused. And I think that's what I love about sci-fi too is that usually women will be on, you know, if it's not like Lilu, yeah, and being like some skinny bridge, some no incredible, you know, the perfect being. Oh yeah, yeah. stuff like that. Like the women and the men are usually on equal, equal because there's no room. Yeah, you're out in fucking space, like. There's really no room for yeah these labels and, and well, stuff like I mean, that. In general, too, like genre stuff, like sci-fi and adventure and stuff like that. It is 
usually written and absorbed by the social outcasts mm-hmm. that don't fit into the, tip, the typical buckets anyway. Yeah. So it's like if we look at like Star Trek and, and things like that, like there, it's much more yeah, equal. It's just not, a, like those are not the big issues anymore. Like yeah. it's interplanetary um, alliances and, you know, it's it's not, it's like these, oh, what is a fucking Q? I yeah. don't give a shit if you're a woman or not. What is this? Yeah. What, what is let's this? Figure this out. Like how do we defeat this? Yeah. Like how do we live? That's the thing. It's about, like, it's kind of survival. You're out in space. Everybody has to do their fucking part. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to die. Yeah. As simple as that. And if you have skill, like, you don't, like, you know, most of the differences between men and women are di- are physical. Mm-hmm. And there are differences. Like, the average man is stronger and has more muscle mass than the average woman. He's mm-hmm. bigger and, you know, but, but when you're in, I think what your point is, is that when you're in a sci-fi type environment, like, it might not just come down to your physical abilities. Like, yeah. it might be a combination of your physical abilities and also your mental abilities to be able to strategize and... Um, perform certain duties or fix the ship or you know whatever it might happen yeah. to be. Well, and there there was one there was one article I was reading that was talking about the differences between like Vasquez, who Vasquez portrays the um, quote unquote typical badass bitch, like very masculine. She talks back, yeah. but she's very masculine. Yeah. Whereas here's Ripley, who's in a quote unquote masculine role, mm-hmm. played by a woman, and where she can't barely throw a grenade, she, somebody needs to teach her how to use her gun her rifle or whatever the fuck it is like they have to teach her she's never used it before yeah but she's good at at like rescuing i don't know what I mean. like well, she, even, she keeps a level head yeah and she even though she's very emotionally motivated yeah she still it doesn't interfere with her ability to reason right and be logical and, smart. and there, there's a part so there's a part when they go in and where all the aliens start coming out of the walls and stuff like that where their commander or whatever the fuck he is nightmare material starts like losing his shit like yeah. he can't blow and she's like she's like we need to get him out there yeah. she's like blah 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 he's like he's like Ripley stop blah blah and she's like okay fuck you <laughs> throws her headset goes starts the car and I runs am the captain through, now runs through the wall <laughs> And he's like, he's like, Ripley, stand down. That's an order. And she's like, I'm not a fucking Marine. She doesn't say that, but she yeah. just keeps driving. Burke keeps dude off to the side and is like, she does what needs to be done. Yeah. If there's ever any question about anything, Ripley is going to do what needs to be done. Very assertive. Yeah. Very assertive, strong character. And it, I just, that's, that's my overall take on all the like, people are like, oh, is it, you know, a feminist movie? Oh, is it blah, blah, blah. And then, like, is it reason so many men like her as a character is because she's a man's character played by a woman. Blah, blah, blah. Like, there's a, there was one thing that kind of, um, it was talking about the phallic um, of the alien, the mouth that comes out and the phallic thing that comes out. Like, they, they, they sexualize. So yeah, they're saying a lot that. of... They say a lot of, you know, Geiger's um, artwork and stuff is very, like, dark, sexualized imagery. Which, if you look well, at it, he has true, a lot yeah. of feminine... And it's a lot of mouth stuff. And, like, well, it's penises, but it's also a lot of vaginas, too. So like, they were talking about there. how men were so okay with a female character killing off these beings. Because the way they... Um, oh, God, I'm so sorry. The way they... Uh, when you take away a man's masculinity, emasculate. emasculate men by literally mouth raping them and impregnating men. Men aren't used to huh. getting raped and impregnated. True. By something. Yeah. So the fact that these aliens literally can rape you as mm-hmm. a man and impregnate you mm-hmm. as a man. You don't care who comes and kills all these motherfuckers. So are we making them carry the, uh, what do you call them? Not, I just want to say ophocytes. Parasites? Oxymorphs? Xenomorphs. Xenomorphs. Are we making them carry the xenomorphs to full term? Because if they really didn't want to get pregnant, they would have fought back, right? So, you saw Prometheus, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> so there was, there was a whole rant about uh-huh. how... Um, What's her name? Numi, Numi Pate, Numi, Numi Pate, Rapace. Yeah. Numi Rapace. Yeah. Um, her character, they were saying the shame of Ripley. They were what? saying that not the shame of, not the shame of Ripley. Like Ripley was at shame, but all of the female characters in the aliens universe that has come after her have been shameful what? because Ripley's so amazing. 
So their reason for this was Mimi Pace's character. Rep Pace. Sorry. Um, That's okay. It's going to keep happening. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong anyway. <laughs> I'm probably fucking everything up. But um, her character was kind of on the fence because... I don't know if you remember Prometheus for I only watched it a couple times. I only times. watched it once. I literally watched it just for the visuals. It was like, beautiful. It was... Oh, my God. It's very beautiful. And then, you know... And then what I took from it was pretty much the origin story of yeah. how that shit... Cra- anyway. The origin story of humanity, apparently. Yeah, yeah. Apparently. <laughs> and then how they wanted to destroy us. All right. And how the aliens are technically a virus. But, okay. So, um, she, her boyfriend was, quote unquote, infected. Was that Fassbender? No. Fassbender was the android. Gotcha. Not android. Okay. Um, yeah. uh, android? Cyborg? No, if you looked at him, he was android. Android. Yeah. He was android. So, but her boyfriend, I don't remember what he fucking looks like. Oh, yeah. Was infected. Yeah. With something. Yes. Seen in his eyes. Yes. And then they had sex. Uh Uh-huh. And so she became, quote-unquote... In the shower, right? No, that was another couple. Okay. Um, (laughs) They had sex, and so she became impregnated. Uh Uh-huh. But it was with an alien. It wasn't with a baby. So she goes into that machine and has the... Weird shit happens, yeah. So she goes into the machine, and somebody literally called it an abortion. What the fuck? They said that she was on the fence about aborting it, knowing that it was an alien just because her and her boyfriend had had sex. It was a parasite. So here's my thing. At first, she's like, shit, am I pregnant? When you think, oh, am I pregnant? You're thinking with a human A baby. human baby, yes. Then when you find out you have a parasite in you. Like, fuck, get it out. She was like, oh, you can't put me under? I don't care. I'll scream through it. Just get it out. Yeah. So that my thing was like you literally are trying to lower you're you're, you're de defeminizing a woman because she got a what you're calling an abortion, which was really just redu- re- getting rid of an infection. <sighs> I was like, how how far how how. What uh, the fuck? Like I can't even. Yeah, I was like, I can't. I wish I would have. I wish I would have kept it. I think that was one of the ones that I was reading, and I'm like, I can't do this, and closed it, and then was like, shit, I should have kept that one. So my takeaway from that whole thing was how incredibly strong she was for being able to endure that kind of pain. How did she not pass out? For the purpose of staying healthy and well and alive. Then, then she rolls out the motherfucker uh-huh. and kicks ass and carries on. Carry on. Gotta keep living. But no, let's reduce it to how you're not a woman if you can't carry let's a child. Let's literally use the word abortion. Oh my god. See, yeah. I was gonna say that I feel like a lot of the problems are created by, and I, I don't want to blame the writers, because here's what happens. What I've learned from all of my um, writing podcasts is that writers write something and then the movie studios tear it apart and yeah. make it trash. What my I think that what I've, a lot of our problems with is this movie feminist or not is because for some reason, however the when the movie gets made like the um, the inferior ones they pit yeah. the males and females against each other yeah and that's the problem that's where the conflict comes in because now you have like this very um, obvious power struggle yeah. between male and female energy whereas in a movie like this. They're just fucking people. It's because they're humans. They're human people going through something together. Together. Yeah. It's not male versus female. It's human versus aliens. And and don't get me wrong. I'm all for, and this is me, I'm all for a movie where it's meant to be in there, where there's um, a woman uses her her sexuality, or a man uses his sexuality to benefit their character or... We I'm all saw Magic I'm Mike. all for it. Bitch, use whatever you need to use to get what yeah. you need to get. Get a girl. I don't fucking care. There's a place for that. There's yeah. a place for the. There's a lot of... But the point is, it doesn't have to be in every movie. Yeah, and it doesn't make somebody less... Fe- my thing... My take on feminism, right, is for equality. Yes. That's what my take has always been. Yeah. 
in feminism, which there are so many different levels of feminism. Yeah. You can't, I don't think you can really say Not all of it I'm is valid either. <clears throat> when but, I say I'm a feminist, I just want things to be equal. I want to be, but I yeah. still, there are still things that I am teaching even my own son. Yes, yes. That isn't exactly equal. I mean, we have year, like centuries yeah. of ingrained gender bias mm-hmm. in all of us that we constantly have to, um, confront and think about and maybe mm-hmm. change our behavior or way of thinking or whatever. But the whole point of representation is that you don't have to have every single movie follow this feminist formula. Yeah. You have representation so that all different types of women are in movies mm-hmm. and TV shows, not just like, okay, we're going to use this one in this movie. Yeah. Oh, let's use this female character in this movie. Like they're just fucking people. Yeah. Just like men get to be like you see the range of men in movies like there's all kinds of there's sensitive Mm -hmm. men there's masculine men there's funny like it's just but every male character gets to be treated as like a unique human thing and whereas you know women characters usually are in one of three categories you know like the nagging wife the whore yeah or the savior yeah the female savior kind of thing and Mm so it's like um the the whole point is like I don't want to have to see every single movie have a badass female like Ripley like I want to see wounded women too like I want to see strong women I want to see slutty women like I want women to just be able to exist as characters in Mm -hmm. movies without it being like a thing because we're people and that's the same thing with LGBT Mm -hmm. characters that's the same thing with minorities like they don't want to be that's the same thing with real life we're all just people that want to be treated like people and that's my overall reading all this because you know of course I typed in like feminist look at mm-hmm. Ripley from Aliens because yeah. that's my first curiosity because well for she's me, an anomaly especially in the eighties to me she's granted I say that she's like a perfect character she's a, I don't say she's a perfect woman I don't say that she's a perfect you know male character played by a woman she, she's the perfect character for this movie she's a person. That yes. is perfect for this, where it is wonderful as a woman to see a strong woman portrayed in a way that doesn't include her sexuality. It doesn't no. include all that stuff. And she's also flawed. Like, she gets to be flawed, mm. too. Like, mm-hmm. like a lot of times it's either, like... you like, said, like, the men get to be flawed. Yeah. Maybe. You get to, you either have, like, oh, she's perfect, like, oh, what a pillar of society, or she's like, oh, this woman is trash kind of thing, Mm -hmm. but but she's, she's a badass, and she's the hero, but she also, she has her shit, like, she's not perfect, like, she makes mistakes, and she, you know, obviously has her, she's got a personality, like, a, a unique personality, and that's why I feel like it's not even fair to say this is a male character, but a woman plays it, because that's just showing, uh, a, a human personality. Yeah. And it wouldn't matter who played it because it's a fully formed complex character. Yeah. And that's and what so I don't I don't see her as this like epitome of feminist like this is how all I this is just a beautiful movie yeah. to me. Perfectly fucking written. But the hero happens to be a woman. And it happens to be a woman. Yeah. That's honestly my my take on on this movie. I I have no I have no complaints. It has the perfect amount of funny, stupid shit. It has the perfect amount of raw, you know, just gory, horrible... Terror. ...stuff. You even have, like, the... And I I know this this is my favorite movie, and I forget people's freaking names, but the commander who bitches out on stuff. Like, even at the end, he redeems himself. Everybody... Every main character has courage, and they have... They're out there for their fellow people. Well, like, that's the point of a team. Them. It's like you make up for each other's inadequacies. Mm-hmm. And they came out on top eventually. But like, And even Burke, the douchebag who's trying to get her impregnated with an alien so he can take it back to the lab and make money off of it, gets yeah. his. It's, but yeah. you can see, like, you can see, like, just take anybody in the world could do this. Like, take just the people in your office that you work with. And, like, they could all fit one of these mm-hmm. people because that's how real people react yeah. to different stimuli. Like, they all react and there's going to be a natural leader that emerges. Yeah. There's going to be someone who just loses their shit completely and has to be helped the entire yeah. time. Like, Hicks, he's not even, he's not on the higher chain of command, but when it comes his turn yeah. to take command, he fucking rocks it. Yeah. And it, it's, it's, it, it's, I, I just fucking love this movie. <laughs> yeah. It just it, it so like, releases all the trappings of, like, what you're supposed to expect. And, like, that's, that's like, again, to go back to representation, like, I don't want 
every theme like the goal for me is not to have every female character on TV be perfect yeah the goal is to have like yeah I want to see a shitty woman character sometimes because there's shitty women out there yeah. just like there's shitty men like I don't want everybody to be perfect like yeah. they have to fit this perfect standard of feminism like no like let's have a wide variety yeah like, do you, let's just think about this when I'm in a room writing a movie with a bunch of other writers because we're all writing it together maybe TV is a better mm. example like do we have to have 75% of these characters be men? Yeah. Like, is there a point to that? Like, someone has to make that decision somewhere. Mm -hmm. Like, all of these characters. Like, do they have to be there? Like, can I we just... I actually... So, I did look up... Because when I found out that Ripley was originally supposed to be a man, there's some other... There's two other movies that um, came to mind, and one was addressed in uh, one of the things... One of the articles I read is... Um, other roles that were written for men mm -hmm. that portrayed as women is okay. um, so I don't know if you've ever seen Conan the Destroyer I it's the second Conan so there's Conan the so. Barbarian Conan the Destroyer is Grace Jones oh, love her yeah so she um, she's known as being an androgynous I can yeah. say it right she was not married but I think she was with David Bowie for a while I think they were married I think they were married no anyway. I think because he married him on yeah, that's right that's right but I do think they dated the, yeah. yeah you're right yeah or they worked together, or, some, or I thought they did. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. she, uh, Zula, her character in Conan the Destroyer was supposed to be male. Mm. And then they brought uh, brought her in. Now, her role, she's one of the quote-unquote main characters, but it was one of the side main characters. She's yeah. part of the group. But just like the other warriors uh -huh. in the movie, she was just greased up and kicked ass. Yeah. Like, that's what she did. She had her funny moments. She greased up and kicked ass. And then that was it. Like... That was kind of my favorite part of Black Panther, too. Like, yeah. those warrior women. Oh, my yeah. God. Badass. Yeah. So good. Badass. And then um, Starbuck. So in the new ah, Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, yeah, because in the original it was a dude. So it was very controversial Dirk when they were Benedict. coming. People got pissed. They got I, remember, I wasn't so even doing research for anything, but I remember yeah. just reading about Battlestar Galactica and people <coughs> were... Yes. So supposedly it was... Um, the new Battlestar Galactica did a really good job on not so much focusing on the gender yeah. of Starbuck, but focusing on them being, you know, that rebel. Which she was really good at. Yeah, which she was, she was very physically feminine, yeah. fit, but feminine. Yeah. Um, but w instead of having so much male attributes, mm -hmm. she just had very against. Yeah. Um, and she had her demons, just like the original Starbuck. for dominant what was it that way because of her gender aggressive because they said that starbuck was an overly masculine character but care thrace with an overall disregard for authority yeah not so it wasn't so much gender based she was a little punk uh, she just had she was disregarding authority so her sitting there smoking a cigar wasn't because she was trying to be a man yeah it was because she was showing her disregard for yeah. authority no and not even a, a cigarette a motherfucking cigar yeah like she did she she did that really well. She did, yeah. yeah. And you didn't think, you, you looked at her and you didn't think she was trying to be a man. You're just like, that's Kara Thrace. That's yeah. just who she is. I knew people, I knew girls like her growing up. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I really, honestly, like, I knew girls like her growing up. They were just more, they just never fit into that girly kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't like an act. Like, I'm not like other girls. That's just yeah. real, legitimately who they were. Yeah. And that's, that. they did a really, really good job of, especially since, not... If if Starbuck wouldn't have been male yeah. in what was it seventies or whatever when the show was, was yeah seventy eight then and I didn't I remember watching a little bit of Battlestar Galactica Oof. from the seventies I know Nikki. you went and watched the whole thing oh those thigh holsters yeah. oh my god <laughs> and she, you had me watch that one episode Oof. like I knew toasters and I knew because yeah. yeah. I'd watched some of it when I was a kid but I didn't really remember I didn't really remember the Starbuck character but I remember <laughs> when they said this is Starbuck I was like wasn't Starbuck a dude like I, but I wasn't vested in the show like I would never ever have chosen the new. Dias Baltar over oh. the old one. The old one was uh, so much less fucking annoying. Gaius fucking Baltar. I, I cannot say six. it without saying Gaius fucking Baltar. Yeah. Like, he was I hate just, his whole face. I hated him so much. I hate... Like, I, I know that you can't... 
pin a character on an actor, but like I'm I just sorry, I feel really like much. if I ever saw that actor in real life, I would just punch him in the fucking face. I just be like, guys, fucking Baltar, don't talk to me. I hate you. Like, like he'd be like, what? Die. I'm like, fucking guy, Baltar. No, fuck you, dude. Like, you shouldn't have done such a good job, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're amazing, but I don't think he was in some other movie I saw, and I was like, guys, fucking Baltar. But really, like <laughs> when you sit down and you think about it, like. Honestly, like, I want to know from... I'm assuming they're all men who are upset about Starbuck being a woman. Like, why? Why are you so upset about that? Like, yeah. what is it to you? Honestly. I mean, as a woman, we don't have to really deal with so much with a female character being changed into a man. See, that's what I'm that curious about. Like, yeah. has that ever happened? Like, has there ever been a, a character written for a woman that they ended up casting a man for? Like, I would want to know not. that. Uh, probably not. And probably I want to know why. Like, why? Why not? Because you can't make a man feminine and blah, blah, blah. Like, eh, blah, blah. Mm. I don't know. That's I think it's easier, like like with Ripley, I think it's easier to make a woman, not make, but have a woman play the role of a man. No, I do think that that is where women have an advantage. Because we women do. can move between those two worlds more easily than a man can. And yeah. I don't mean that men have a harder time embracing I just mean that society makes it harder yeah. for men to do that. And I think that's where a lot of this... I don't think that feminine and masculine traits are really inborn as much as we think they are. I think mm. that it's more like society shaping mm. what is masculine and what is feminine. Mm. Because you see, like... Um, yeah, I know you watch Vikings. But, yeah. like, in that society, in that culture, like, it's not really that big of a deal. Like, women can be warriors. Yeah. You know, men have a part in raising their children. Like, it's not really such a big thing. Like, they play to their strongest features no matter what you are like if you're good at being a warrior then you're going to be a warrior yeah. well i think that there was there was one episode that addressed that like when they were um they were they had farmland in england like they had gotten farmland from oh, whatever king. yeah they did that whole thing and lagertha comes over and the king is just like she's like a conundrum and they're like what are you talking about well, that was about? a different culture yeah he was like, he's like she's a warrior she's mm-hmm. a mother she's you know, a, a wife, she's a nurturer. He, he's just like, she's everything. Like, yeah. she's got, she's everything. And I was like, women can be everything. Yeah. And here's the here's the kicker. Women can choose not to be everything yes. and still be a woman. You can be a like, woman and not have children. It's yeah. totally fine. You can, there, you can do anything. You can wear you makeup. Can you really don't have do to wear makeup. Anything. Whatever you want. Yeah. Dudes, you wear your rompers if you want to. Yeah. I feel like they'd be really constricting to your balls. But whatever no, you want to do. No, I've seen pictures. I don't think you should. But anyway. <laughs> See, now, Nikki, that's an example of I just... I know. Going... You don't have to... Um, you don't have to like it, but they have the choice. They have and a choice. They're to totally do that. Can. And it's none of your goddamn business what they want to wear. I know. But I can still say. The one thing I can't get over is socks and sandals, and I don't care what gender you are. It's just weird. <laughs> it's just fucking Stop weird. Stop doing it. Stop doing it. <laughs> Why are you doing that? Aww. But it's weird, like, seeing slides with no socks on. I think I've seen so many people use slides as, like, around the house slippers. Yeah. That if I see slides without socks, it's kind of weird. Huh. I don't know. No. I think that's just because I usually see this. Yeah. Another thing I wanted to bring up was the time frame in which... Okay, so we have... What year is it, by the way? Where? Here. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Sorry. We don't I know it sense. says it at some point, but I don't remember. Oh, it does it? I never knew if it was addressed or not. I think it did, but I don't remember. But, okay, so... The kind of female characters that are coming around about this time. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just... So this... Do you mean the 80s? Yeah. Okay. So this was it was this, it was like ten years after the moon landing on the moon. When did land on the moon? Sixty nine. Sixty nine. So fifteen years. Ten yeah. Ten years later, we have like Star Wars, mm. where we have another strong female character. Leia. We have Princess Leia, who. Gosh, not only is she's like too. helping lead the Rebel Alliance against the Empire. She sees her whole fucking planet blown up. Mm. She's still running. All while not wearing a bra because literally I watched a documentary and um, what's-his-face said that uh, there's no bras in space. George Lucas? Yeah. What a fucking dick. Yeah. I don't like that. So she had to do this all without wearing a bra. She was not a... I mean, she was kind of well endowed. Yeah. Yeah. Poor lady. That must have hurt. Literally said there's no bras in space. So she's running around with a gun with buns on either side of her head. In, like, this flowy white thing. No bra. No support. Nothing. 
But there's slave outfits in space. Yeah. Okay. 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 Mm-hmm. 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 Blah, blah. Then we had slasher films started changing. It wasn't so much, um, mm. which again, I didn't watch very many slasher films. Like talking about Halloween and yep. um, Jamie Lee Curtis's character. Yeah. Which there was still the screaming. There was still the roaming. But she also fought back. Yeah, she did. She didn't just. It was a good movie. Yeah. She didn't just let. We should watch it happen. We should. We yeah. should because I've never seen them all the way through. Only seen bits and pieces. She. There are just. Uh, it amazes me sometimes. I feel like people forget our history because there are these examples of incre- and they're so. Every movie like that, is so incredibly successful, mm-hmm. and I'm like, who is not? Who is the person who is not? accepting that this is what people will watch. Like, people will like this. But then they'll make a sequel. Or and Well, I don't know about the Halloween movies, but sometimes you'll have perfect, I don't want to say perfect, but just spot on. Everything lined up, and it's great. Yeah. And then the next one, they make it a little different. They're like, you know what? At the end of Aliens, like, there was a hint of Hicks and Ripley kind of like, Mutual respect, but they have a connection. Like, oh uh, yeah, woman kinda... can't get, she can't be complete without having yeah. a love interest. So what do they do in the third Aliens? Like, she lands on this prison planet. She gets laid. It's like, yay, Ripley finally got laid. But why? Was it now? It was when... mutual. She's like, look, it's been a while. I know like, it's do you mutual, have sex? but when you know when they film sex scenes, a lot of times, like, it is it. definitely okay. tailored. Okay, well. I feel like a lot of times that is, um, again, movie studio over engineering because, um, like, just like what happened with Wonder Woman, the armor that the warrior women wore, mm-hmm. Justice League, it's all fucking skimpy shit. Yeah. And you're like, why? And what happened? What is the reason? Like, you had to make a decision to make that change because you had Wonder Woman and the precedent had already been set. Mm-hmm. They had their costumes for the whole movie. The movie was wildly successful. Mm-hmm. Somebody had to make the decision, the conscious decision to change that. Yeah. What was the reason behind that decision? Yep. What what, what justification what? did you have for making them in skimpier, less practical warrior outfits? Even though they're female warriors. Yeah. They're, they're warriors. All did all. you think, you know what was missing from Wonder Woman? More titties. Yeah. Was that it? It's like we get to we get to play with this a little bit, so let's uh let's make it like this. I mean clearly it wasn't a problem because a lot of people, men and women, saw it. Yeah. And I I mean you have so many women raving about that movie, like I felt like there were far more complimentary reviews from women than there were complaining about it. Right. So why? 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 Because they could. It's just it it it, it feels like People, I don't know if it's more that people need to justify their job by saying, make this change because I know what I'm talking about and yeah. it's going to be good for you. Or if it's people trying to make that more. It, came up. it you had know to it have came come up. up. Like, I just, I don't. Why? And I remember watching something and the actresses were like, well, yeah, this is a little bit easier to move around in just because it's flimsier and mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, like, it doesn't protect doesn't, you yeah. if you're warrioring. Like, warrioring. Fucking suit of armor. Like, does anybody care that that's not easy to move around yeah. in? No, because no, you're trying, trying to not to get it. shot with an arrow or stabbed with a sword. Yeah. Motherfuckers. Yeah. I'm so angry. So angry. I am stoked for Wonder Woman 1984. It looks so good. But, like, Janie and I, my daughter and I, have been going I'm back and forth. I'm still trying to figure out the, the bringing him back. I know. Like, we're trying to figure out, like, what happened. She, her theory, which I think is actually pretty solid, mm-hmm. is that it's a Captain America type deal. Uh-huh. Where somehow, like, he got jettisoned out of the explosion and landed in the frozen, you know, froze, basically. And then someone dug him up later. But, but he's not a superhuman. He doesn't have, what you would call it in it, like Captain America. Does. Not at that time. Yeah. But maybe... They... What was... There was something in there, though, that was going to explode. What was in there? Bombs. Just bombs? It wasn't I think it was special. just bombs. Okay, gamma. Yeah. But, um... Uh, gamma. Radiant. It wasn't that. Okay, anyway. No, it was... I think it was just bombs. It was World War One, But, um... Uh... Fuck. Sorry. Oh, so the end of Wonder Woman when, um... God damn it. Who was it? Who was the rich guy? Batman. Uh-huh. When he sends her, <laughs> shut up. When he sends her Steve's watch, mm-hmm. she acts like, because you know, this was, it looked like modern day. 
because we, you know, when they met up, it mm-hmm. was modern day, and then everything was a flashback. But um, it seemed like she was still emotionally devastated by that. But if he came back in 1984. He would have to, he would have to die again in that movie. She's gonna lose him again. She's gonna have to lose him again. Is yeah. what I'm thinking. So I, I don't know. I'm really curious to see how they do that. Yeah. I have faith in the Wonder Woman part of DC. Nothing else. Yeah. Nothing DC has done has been good except for um, the Christopher Nolan Batman movies. Yeah. With Heath Ledger, you know, in the middle one of those, but um. Because Wonder Woman was so good. Aquaman was terrible. Yeah. I still watch that. Was just I, like candy. Hate, I don't like Amber Heard. I don't like her. I feel like she's a... It's uh, not even... I have so many problems with that movie. Well, yeah. Like, you're having a whole fight scene at the end where you're like, hoo-ha, war. You're killing your own people. I think that he had no chemistry with her. The yeah. love interest aspect of that was absolutely not necessary. Yeah. Like, not at all. Like, he could have just been himself and gone and through everything. She could have just been herself. And she could have just been, you know, helping him. And yeah. they didn't have to force that kind of relationship on them. Um, but Justice League was bad. Um, I mean, it wasn't terrible, but it just wasn't as good as... It wasn't as good. Yeah. And, and then I, I... I was expecting, I think, what's bad is I was expecting more of, like, an Avengers vibe. Well... Like, you have superheroes coming together. Yeah. Like... My problem with DC <coughs> is that it's... Uh, and, and here's the thing about me. Okay. And this makes absolutely no mm. sense. I absolutely love Dark and Gritty. I love an anti-hero more than anything, but somehow the DC movies take something that should be fun and they make it fucking depressing. Yeah, that's true. And um, Marvel keeps all of the pathos in it. They keep all of the tragedy, but it's entertaining. Mm -hmm. It's still like you go to the movies and you have a good time. You feel all the feelings in there, but you still have all of the elements that you need to balance it out. So you have the comedic relief you yeah. have like the the i mean there's nothing nothing has honestly fucked me up more than when iron man died like yeah. i mean that was atrocious but that movie i still think on it fondly and i will watch it again yeah whereas um like you know justice league like i don't really have any emotional connection to that yeah. movie like even though a bunch of terrible stuff happened that i probably should have connected to i'm just like ugh. Mm. It was just... Ugh. If you're not vested, you're not vested. I mean, that's, if you don't have a connection, you don't have a connection. And Aquaman, so like, I can probably so just bad. watch that on mute and be fine. <laughs> I can literally just watch a gif of mm-hmm. Aquaman looking angry and that does it for me. I'm good. Yeah. Hey, what is that fucked up thing? I just like angry men. Sorry. Anyway. Well, we all do because you know what I think? It's, um, it's thrilling. And this mm-hmm. is a this is very much a gender relationship that probably will only be well I don't know I can't say but I was gonna say it's probably only relevant to uh, straight couples but I really don't know if that's yeah. the case but like there's something I think that the reason that um, a Darcy is so appealing yeah and, and men in general is that there's something thrilling about knowing that this person you're with can fuck you up physically yeah but he won't. I don't even know if it's that. I think that there's a... I think that's part of it. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not saying that's not part. I think that's part of it. But I also think it's you feel special. Because yeah. you are shown a side that not everyone gets to see. You are... The, it's, it's like being your friend. Like, uh, I have an exception. Okay. Like, the card that you made where you're like, I hate everyone, but I like you. See, I don't get like that because you're a friend or. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's just who you are. Just There's no it. helping it. But you like people. But you're number one. I know. I have absolutely no insecurity about that. I know. That makes me happy. <laughs> it's like everybody knows. I'm like, oh, Sherry's coming over. Everybody knows. Don't call. You don't guys text. should <laughs> know. Like, the, there have been a couple of people, maybe three, over the past few years that have tried to situate just, They've tried to basically usurp my role as the <laughs> best friend. And um, I've just sat back and laughed because yeah. I know that it's just... And it's not even like I'm possessive over you. Like, I just yeah. know I'm secure in the fact that there's no better fit for your best friend than me. Yeah, you're it. <laughs> so there's no reason to That's worry. It. And, like, everything, like, they try so hard. Like, I can, <laughs> like, on social media and stuff, like, I see them just trying so hard <laughs> to convince you that they're actually your best friend. And I'm just like... <laughs> and then, and then, like, then I scroll later, past. I'm, like, tagging Sharon something. <laughs> I'm like, Sharon, look at us! And it's like, 
a dog in a field that nobody else gets no, and we're cracking up. or it's up. like a dog and a cow that are best friends, or it's like two cows that are like walking towards each other in the pasture, like mooing happily. Like it's always some kind of weird animal thing, you know? It is, honestly. Or it's really like is. those two foxes that were laughing uncontrollably with each other. <laughs> or the ducks that are just like, wah, wah, or no, wah, the wah, wah. Se- no, not the seals. The- oh, the walruses. Yeah, the <laughs> It's never flattering animals, you guys. It's always bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> like, I forgot about the foxes with the one just starts <laughs> rolling away. We've never tagged ourselves as like some regal horses. <laughs> it's never that. Like we're never these wolves that I'm are find just like. Something now. <laughs> <laughs> it's always fucking barnyard animals. Or it's like a muck song. Or Maybe some like fat, hairy saying? water creatures or something. Oh, water buffaloes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or it's the heart and brain things. Yeah. <laughs> Even that one's awkward Yeti like shit. <laughs> I know. Like... I know. Oh, I had so speaking oh, of Yetis, I had um I was oh my god, I know he doesn't listen to this, so it's fine, but I had uh, my coworker, who's like my unofficial nemesis, who I really I dropped it because he's not even qualified to be my nemesis. Like he's not even at that level. Nemesis so it's has like whatever. To be equal. Exactly, and he's not. But so we were we had to go to a meeting. Both of us had to go to the same meeting, which was on the other campus. Just funny thing. I always thought growing up he was saying Where's Bowski, but the guy's name's Where's Bowski. Oh. Um, and I didn't know until years later when I had the subtitles of. Yeah. That it's Weir's Bowski. Subtitles are very helpful if they're actually accurate. Even though they show, like, there, where he's keeping, he's checking their vitals and stuff like that, it has their names and it says Weir's Bowski. I always thought he was saying, Where's Bowski? <laughs> Bowski! <laughs> no, it's Weir's, he's just yelling the guy's name. Yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, so we had, we had to go to the same meeting on the other campus, and so I was timing it right. So, mm-hmm. like, he walked past my office, I saw him, and I was like, cool. So I waited, like, five more minutes, and then I left to yeah. avoid the awkward, like, Ooh. So somehow, Ooh. some fucking how, Nikki, I walk out, you know, because I have to walk, like, a fucking mile to my mm. car. So I walk out to the street, and I'm, like, waiting for the, the crosswalk light to come on. And this motherfucker walks up behind me. And I'm like, how the fuck? He was waiting for you. So, no, I don't think so. But I, maybe he went to the bathroom or something. I don't know. But so the, we ended up like just like walking. And then I was like, well, maybe he parked in the other parking lot. But no, like we're both walking into the same parking lot. I was like, fuck. Yeah. And so then like he started to peel off this way. And I was like, okay, cool. Maybe he'll be chill. And then he was like, oh, oh, so, so who's driving? And I was like, God damn it. Uh, so I was like, oh, my car's right here. I can drive. I was like, my car probably, it smells like pizza. Like, I mean, I'm sorry. And, so, <laughs> and he's like, oh. oh. Here she goes. Yes. Fuck. And then she's like, okay, well. I love that. Then she buckles Nuda. Oh, baby. Safety first. And then she's like, I'm going to figure out how to drive this. I used to be a pilot. Here I go. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my favorite parts. I'm sorry. I like that. It looks like the Batmobile from yeah, it's the, like the armor thing. movies. He's yeah. like, stop, blah, blah. Makes her fuck up. Yeah, well, I mean, how often has she driven that? Yeah. I wouldn't and know how to handle that either. those quarters, like... Those controls are all weird. And then she's like, fuck this, I'm gonna hide down here. <laughs> but uh, but he's very dry. Like, he doesn't really have a goofy sense of humor. Like, yeah. Like, you know, his, his sense of humor is more toxic. Yeah. He only oh, wow. finds joy from other people being torn down. Yeah. Ugh. So, but he gets in and stuff, and I'm like, oh, you just move the seat back. Like, by some miracle, I didn't have a bunch of trash in my car. No. What? But then I'm, like, I'm like driving, and I'm, like, looking around, and I'm, like, I have, like, my Sasquatch air freshener, <laughs> which it doesn't smell like anything anymore, because I got it, like, three years ago in Portland when I went to go visit my brother. Oh, too bad you didn't have my air freshener. I, I know. And then I have... You should have been like, hold on. I have been under... I have been very stressed lately, okay? Yeah. I am stressed. And so I had, like, my um, my water bottle with a cigarette butt in it. Just one. Because, like, every <laughs> once in a while, I'll smoke a cigarette after I drop the kids off on my way to work. And so I had that, like, over here, like, on my in the door. Like, oh, where yeah, so was. Saying, yeah. And, but, like, I know he probably saw it, but it looked like it, it, the, just, it looked like, it water. Looked like a, a piss jar. A piss bottle. And then I'm, like... I'm just, I'm just looking around at everything else in my car, and I'm just like, I'm not an adult. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know what... He's only probably, like, ten years older <sighs> than me, but I'm just like... 
Yeah. I still feel like I'm fucking 17. I don't feel like anybody can take me seriously. No, I'm yeah. not. And I never, I never think that I want anybody to take, I'm never yeah. anything other than what I am. But at the same time, I'm just like, this is why he thinks I'm a joke. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a not, and yeah. I will defeat him eventually. I will defeat him like, eventually. I, and then I kind of felt okay about it. I was like, you know what? If people underestimate me because of this, cool, fine. That's an advantage I got. It, exactly. It def- Ooh, hey, hey, sexy. Oh. That alien is a little bit sexy. Is it just me? No, there's a bunch of... I don't uh, have any kink about it. Let me get this there's, straight. There's a lot of predator. There's a lot of... Yeah, I don't want to have sex with the alien at all. There's like... Did you know... <gasps> Sherry, can I gross you out? Yes. There's literally these... Um, these things that you can buy. Uh huh. <laughs> what category of things? Sex. Oh. Sex toys. Uh huh. Where you put these like silicone lips. Covers? Eggs. Eggs. Okay. And it's shaped like it looks like alien y, uh-huh. right? Uh huh. And you can deposit alien <gasps> eggs inside you. Why? Because people like the idea of it. Okay. Look at, she runs it over. Nice. It tried to it tried to attack her, and she's just like, Burr, bloop. Yeah. Sorry, not sorry. So that's real. That ah, that's a baboon. Huh? I yeah. never would have guessed. Yeah. No idea. I'm have. terrible at identifying sounds. Yeah, I'm not at it too. Look at her. And then she just keeps driving because here her PTSD is coming in. He's like. Even still, like, she looks so composed. Yeah. Like, she's not panicking. She's, she's in survival mode. There's a difference. He's like, your axle, the axle's blown, you're grinding metal, like, we just need to stop. And she's like... <laughs> you're gonna start a fire. Okay. I Is mean, it, it looks dead? okay, but all right, whatever, dude. Uh, what was it built she for, She didn't honestly? run over acid blood things, so... True. Yeah. True. And then she goes and checks on you. Like, Aww. she gets shit done, and then she goes and checks on you. You got your doll? You okay? <laughs> You want a snack? I you got some juice, juice box? boxes. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the damn juice boxes. I'm trying to think if I've covered everything. That oh I well, well we're at an hour and twenty minutes, so. I mean, you've been listening to us this long. And you must really love us. Oh, I also love the dynamic at the end that it's pretty much two moms fighting. What? The so, alien and Ripley, you mean? So they find the queen. Are they? Are we saying they're soccer moms? I was trying to, I was going to come with you, I was going to ask you, but I don't think you've seen it all the way, so maybe it's not a good I haven't. time to come through to that, but, um, yeah, they come up to the queen, so the queen lays the eggs. Sure. The eggs hatch the face huggers. Yes. That impregnate people and then make her little minions. With okay? the xenomorphs, right? Yeah. So, but there's the queen. She's the main yes. mamma jamma. And so... Newt gets taken by an alien. So where did the ovomorphs come from? Is that what the face huggers hatch from? I don't know what that is. The, the eggs? eggs? Yeah. Yeah, the queen lays the eggs. That are the face huggers. Okay, yes, yes. That okay. For, yeah, so instead cycle. of like something coming and fertilizing the eggs, the eggs just sit there, mm-hmm. wait for somebody to come nearby, and then when proximity of a host comes like, by... Like, please! Then they open and think, yeah. So, um, Nuke gets taken by an alien. They put her in a place to get, you know, face hugged. Yes. Ripley <laughs> goes and finds her. Yeah. And is little rescuing her oh out of there. God. Rescues her out of there and she runs into, here's the queen mm-hmm. laying eggs. Mm. And so Ripley's like, okay, it's like we can't have a conversation. So Ripley's like, this is my flamethrower. Yep. And oh. then she points it at an egg and is like, we're leaving. Get your fuckers away. Because like you see them start to come in. And the queen looks both ways and they retreat. And she's like, okay, well then we're leaving. But then as they're about to back up, one of the eggs open and uh-huh. Ripley literally does this. Oh, it's so badass. Ripley's like, <sighs> and burns all the shit. So then the queen, cause she has this huge tube that she's laying the eggs out of. Yeah. Rips it off oh and goes God. running after Ripley and the baby's like, I'm gonna fucking kill you. You killed my babies. Naturally. Right? Yes. So it comes down to then they get off the planet. The planet blows up. They get on the ship, but the queen is a stowaway. Mm. She comes down, rips Bishop, because at this point, Hicks is on the ship injured, but passed out because of medication. Yeah. Um, her and Newt are on the ship, and Bishop is the one that flew the ship mm-hmm. to rescue them. So she rips Bishop in half, but he's an android, so he's still, like, flopping around, like, what the fuck's going on? Sure. 
And it's Ripley and mm. the Queen. Ripley gets into the big mm-hmm. machine mm-hmm. crab thingy. Yeah. They have a fight. Because then they're like equal because they're equal in size. I have seen, I have seen clips so of that. So it's literally two moms because the Queen is going after Newt. Like she wants to get Newt too. So she's going after her. Like you killed my kids, I'm going to kill your kid kind of thing. Yeah. So it's literally on top of this whole movie being this huge sci-fi thing. It's ending with two moms fighting. Yeah. When it comes down to it. Mm-hmm. Which is, like, is it the soccer moms at the PTA meeting? Like, I think it's the protectors. Yeah. Trying to protect the people they're responsible for, which yeah. is what a king does. Mm. Honestly. Mm. I mean, if you think about it. We're supposed to. They're supposed to, yes. But they're talking about this being a hive kind of thing. With I was the actually thinking eggs. about, like, the clan leaders from yeah. the Scottish Highlands, mm-hmm. from, like, the Outlander, which I'm going to insist we watch next. <laughs> which, I, I know this is coming out of nowhere, but, like, in looking through videos, for some reason, an interview with Charlie Hunnam, Hunnam uh-huh. came yeah. up. I was like, oh, let me click on this. He's the most boring motherfucker. Like, he's telling stories, and they're not really that amusing. Really? And, like, when you go from the characters that he plays and how, like... Yeah. How he represents how he acts and represents yeah. characters and stuff like that and him just telling these stories like they're not bad stories but I don't think he's just that great of a storyteller like I'm sitting there reading and like I'm watching the video and do you ever find yourself just kind of being like and you start leaning forward more and you're just kind of like yeah okay there's the end like whereas Tom Hardy is a very good storyteller mm-hmm. very good I can see that I, I put those two together in the same category for some reason I don't know why yeah but it was he was even on Jimmy Fallon, uh-huh. which there's always laughter, there's always blah, 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 and it's just kind of like... Maybe he was drunk. I don't know. I watched two or three different episodes. Maybe like he's different always interviews. drunk in public appearances. I don't know. Maybe it's one of the... Because I have a hard time. Like, I am a terrible storyteller, too. Like, yeah. I can I freely admit I don't it, think which is why I prepare so I'm much. I'm very much but, amused by your right? Well, yeah, but, I mean, the We're thing besties. is, like, I am much better one-on-one yeah. than I am, like, in front of other people. Yeah. I feel like that's what it is. His, his are more, like, conversational pieces than something that you would say in front of a crowd. And, and, I can't even imagine the kind of pressure, not only to be on TV... But to be in front of a live audience, knowing that what you're doing is going to... It's like a produced yeah. segment. Like, it's all fucking fake. Like, I can't yeah. imagine... I mean, I, I think I would probably be the same way. But at the same time, like, that is kind of what you're supposed to do. But based also off the characters that he played... Like, I was like, he was a really good actor then because his... Oh, well, more props to him. Yeah, then. yeah. His, his characters seem very far off from how he seems. Yeah. Like, he's talking about how he saved a cat off of his roof... And I'm like... That should be a very entertaining story. Yeah, but it, but but honestly, like, listening to... I was just kind of like... Mm. I don't know how to explain it. I'll have to send it to you so you can tell me if you have the same feeling. Yeah, I probably won't watch it, but feel free. <laughs> no, this is good. I like this. I think that um, if anything was going to make me switch teams, it would be Ripley with a flamethrower. Mm. Just you saying that makes me want to... She literally duct tapes two guns together... Like, duct tapes them together. Look at and it her. Makes, uh, yeah. She's incredibly attractive. Like, she's got a, um, a charisma mm-hmm. to her. Like, she might not be the most traditionally beautiful woman, yeah. but she's very a- appealing. But it's so crazy. Also, like, just stop for a second and think of um, what's her face from Ghostbusters. How different yeah. those characters are. Even as mothers. Yeah, it's it's... Wow. Yeah. It's very wow to me. Yeah. yeah. I always wonder where these characters come from. Like, how much of it is from the script? Mm-hmm. And how much of it is, like, them drawing on just, like, something else? And th- there was also an interview where she was saying, um, Sigourney Weaver, she's like, well, and she's like, I, you know, I was kind of a snob. Like, I really didn't want to do sci-fi. Like, it mm-hmm. just was like, I, I don't know if there's, like, a, a, especially at this point where sci-fi is really yeah. starting to come from this, like, goofy sci-fi thing into very this, cheesy. like, very... Yeah a bit more evolved characters and stuff like that. And so she's like, I was really snotty. And she's like, you know, but she's like, I read the character and I was very excited about Mm -hmm. how it could be portrayed. And then she was like, you know, I always wanted to be like Henry. She was kind of like, you know, you always want to play as an actor. You always want to play like Henry V, but you're a woman and you can't play Henry Mm. V. So this is me with my chance to play a, like kind of a, play Henry V, but, wow. yeah. Yeah. 
I love her so much. Yeah. You good. know, that's what, you know, I tell you, I have, um, uh, I take, it's stupid. It's so stupid. But I take very seriously whether or not to start a new TV show. Mm-hmm. Because I Oh, because you'll go all the way. I am a completionist, for one thing. It is a kind of, I'm not going to say I'm OCD, because I'm not. But mm-hmm. it's kind of like a, I can't not. Like you were just asking it. me about the expanse. Yeah. And so I know that whatever I start watching is going to be a heavy emotional commitment. And so I was really, I really wanted to watch The Witcher, but I was also very hesitant to do so. And mm-hmm. I think it's because just like sci-fi kind of had its start in the 80s, like I think that Star Wars obviously paved the way, yeah. but it didn't start out as, a, you know, kind of a mainstream hit. I think it was still really niche even back in the day, even mm-hmm. though this was like an anomaly that everybody loved, but... Yeah, um, because it did action and gore yeah. and everything all together, yeah. But the video game movies I Mm. think are following that same pattern where we're starting to get more video game movies and I was I really like look I liked the trailers and the look of the Witcher and everything that I had seen but I couldn't help remembering Assassin's Creed. I was gonna say Assassin's Creed. (laughs) And I mean Laura Laura Croft were really good movies and those were based on video games and stuff like that but but at the same time like it matters so much that the writing and the directing follows the spirit of the video game mm. and not necessarily the formula for what quote unquote makes a good movie. Yeah. And I think that's what Assassin's Creed tried to do. Yeah. And that's why it failed because it did not capture the spirit of the video game. And then I was very pleasantly surprised by The Witcher because even though I never, I never played it, but it did very much capture the spirit of a video game. Like, he is going on quests. Yeah. And they might not necessarily be related. But then they feed into... But the whole yeah. thing, it's not so much about the story, it's about the character. Mm-hmm. Like, that character is the heart of the story. I knew you were going to love that character, too. And he's a really good character, and so I feel like... Um, but I, I do feel like... But there are also books, too. So it wasn't I just... Yeah, yeah, I'm about to... I'm thinking about getting them. But there's... Um, we're going to go on this adventure together. Yeah. And I think books, instead of sharing video them... Game, and then, yeah. I think we should get a copy, each of us at the same time, and read it. And, and then, book club, just you and me. Oh my god! Yeah! Yeah. And then, yes... I yeah. think that we should do that. But I think that um, that might be the new frontier, like, is going to be, like, video game yeah. movies. Like, um, like Street Fighter sucked, but I love that movie so much. Yeah. Mortal Kombat sucked, but I love that movie so yeah. much. The Mario Brothers movie? No. Yeah. Never. Not even a little bit. No. I'm, I'm curious. I, I don't want to go see Sonic, but I have to because I have a young child. Uh, yeah, we should <laughs> take the boys. Yeah, we should, but I don't want to. <laughs> and says, I meant like burgers and yeah. uh, milkshakes. Well, even that shit. <laughs> anyway. But yeah, so I think I think that's it. Yeah, I think I hit most of. I mean, I wish I would have done better. I'm sorry. I just had one day and some you did pickups at work. But oh, we were very engaged for the whole thing. I looked up some stuff and then we said some things. I think it was a success. This is an amazing movie and I love it with all my heart. Those are your closing comments. Mm-hmm. Those are your closing statements. I think so. All right. Well, I think that's it for us then. Bye. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to leave us a review so that other cool people like you can find us and laugh at us. I mean with us. Okay, maybe at us. Visit our website, notyourmomshow.com, and click the contact link to connect with us on social media or leave us a message. We love hearing from y'all. Bye. Bye.